Okay, we're on live. I can oh, I can barely see that because of the glare, and I just won't have to get to see my eyes because I'll be because my gla glasses are translucent, so they'll be uh, looking like sunglasses. But I wanted to get on here, uh, and the, we've got. I see we've got less than two minutes to start the message. Some of you, if you saw my commercial earlier, you'll realize that I'm bringing Glue Monday from a remote location. <laughs> Do I have the is Meineke's name out there? Yay, Meineke's name is up here. Because they get the shout out. I'm sitting outside the um, auto mechanic and they said my car is 91% ready and so I've got another 8% go and, and then I'll be able to get out of here. But hey, what's, I, I won't be able to see all the names because of the glare, but I see Tom. What's going on, Tom? What's up, Anthony? Hey, Chicago in the house. What's up, Johnny? Oh, that's too cool. Hey, what's up, Johnny? What's up, Tom? Yeah. Uh, yeah, getting my, no, I wish it were my oil. No, I've got some type of um, uh, axle problem. I needed $1,100 worth of work, okay? It was it was a non-budgeted, uh, you better get your butt in there situation. And the funny thing is I'm going to put it in my message as well because it falls right into the wheelhouse of what we're talking Thanks, Brenda. Glad you came back because I know you came on on the commercial earlier. And hey, what's up, Holly? Uh, DST, one of the first people to introduce me to the Delta, so Holly, never forget you. All uh, right, and uh, I can see there, uh, Renee, hey, Renee Burke, hey, what's up, Renee, what's up, Gwen? All right, oh, y'all yeah, might join at the same time, they put y'all names together, that's different. Hey, what's up, Lil? Okay, y'all, we got less than a minute to go for the message, but uh, yeah, if you just, if you missed my commercial earlier, uh, I'm at the auto mechanic because I, I had an emergency on my car emergency surgery all right see that's the thing about you know the coronavirus life still goes on we're still going to have challenges that have to do with everyday life so so let's get talking about uh, today our topic as you know what I've been doing is I always ask people according to the letters in their name to give me words beginning with a certain a theme letter and then I create the message based on that the reason I've been doing that is because what I'm also doing is I'm teaching you a actually a system that you can use a formula that you can use whether you want to use it to write poetry uh, a journal because I know right now journaling is an important thing that people could be doing to help them handle stress uh, as a business letter a cover letter for your resume so this is a formula that you can use when you're doing your writing and creative writing as well always throw out the vowels and then keep the consonants then come up with two or three words to go with each consonant because your consonants make your word make your sentences and so as you come up with different words from your consonants you've done what's cre what's called creating a word bank and what do we do with banks we make deposits and withdrawals so the words you deposit into your bank when you get stuck for a thought of what you want to say next now you make a withdrawal you go to your bank and you see if there's a word in there that you can either use in what you're writing or sparks you to another word so in other words you can have a word in your bank that won't be in what you're writing but it makes you think of another word that you could use so that's the formula that you can use all right okay meanwhile i want to introduce this this uh, week's topic i told you that our, our uh so we took the word self s-e-l-f we threw out the e so you can see the words up there in the description of the words that people gave me with the S, L, and the F. And those are the words that I'm going to get into today's message and I'm going to tell you how. But first, what I'll do is I will read a poem to you from my book, A Poet in Every Prophet, and it sets the stage. And one of the things that I'm going to do, a good suggestion I got from my, my, my friend evangelist Michelle Mora, that, and that is all the poems that I read to you, that I use in my glue broadcast because I used to just do glue Wednesday and now I'm going to do glue Monday, Wednesday and Friday with the poems that I use in each broadcast. If you'd like a copy of that poem because I want to call it my pan my pandemic poetry, but they're not always poems that I create for this, for this. They're poems that I have in my arsenal that I can use that goes with the topic. You email me at Uncle Sporty at gmail.com if you like a copy of that day's poem so you can go back to look at all of the 
the broadcast that I've done and see if that if you like a copy of that poem and then I'll email you a PDF. Don't send me an inbox. Email me at unclesporty at gmail.com. That way I can just click reply and send the PDF to you, okay? So the poem I'm going to use today to go with our topic is called, Are You Willing to Go Another Day? So as we talk about ourself, are you willing to go another day? Seems like a simple enough question. Yet there'll come a time where the answer will be no. There'll come a moment where you won't be able to share your destination. Will that place be with God you've come to know? For that's the question. Yes, that's the challenge we face. The reason we proclaim thanks for last evening, this morning, this day, in this space. Are you willing? Are you willing to understand your pain's temporary discomfort and the shadow it cannot cast upon your faith? Are you willing to remember and forget at the same time? Remembering that this battle is not yours, forget about it. Are you willing to? Are you willing to release the control you don't have? Accept the blessing you can't create? Observe the miracles you didn't forecast? Enjoy the moments you won't replete, repeat? Appreciate the ones you'll share? Are you willing to go? Are you willing to go where your road has no visible map for the steps ordered on your behalf? and submerge your spirit into the darkness of trust, love, and patience to confidently feel your hand up and receive your guidance uncovered as a blessing. Are you willing to go another day? And that's the question we have to ask ourselves. Are we willing to go another day? And then that's also the answer we have to give ourselves and, and look at our resiliency and recognize that, yes, we have gone another day. We've made it another day. Don't let it just be a cliche where you say every day on this day outside of the ground is a good one. Let that be for real because there are people who didn't wake up today. There is someone who won't wake up tomorrow. And then, you know, and sometimes when we're dealing with challenges, we question, excuse me, whether or not we want to wake up. And so that's where we have to ask and say, yes, I'm willing to go another day. I know things are going to be, get, to be better. And so for things to get better, what do we have to do? We have to take care of ourself. So our topic today is self. How can you take care of yourself? So you see the words up there in the, in the description that I'm going to be using. There are 13 words. So I grouped them into three different parts of our message. So the first part, I grouped three, four words. Sensitive, super, forgiveness, and loyal. And sensitive, super, super, forgiveness, and loyal. Not necessarily in that order, but recognize that we have to be sensitive. Everybody's going through something. And we, and, and we have to feel that there's some, some subliminal stress or shortness in ourselves. See, that we're, we have to be sensitive to ourselves. There's some type of subliminal shortness or stress in our life. So we need to be more patient with ourselves. See, there are certain things that we can't do. Don't feel guilty and don't feel, don't have, oh, don't find. Don't feed a guilty conscience. Can't read my own hand right because I sat here and wrote it. And I wrote the feed a guilty conscience because while I was sitting out here waiting for my for my car, a woman came and she was getting something in her car, and we had a conversation and we and we ended up talking about our parents. And so she said both her parents were in heaven, but she talked about how she wasn't there. Her, her parents were in Florida and she's in North Carolina. And she talked about the term. She used the term she wasn't there for her mother in her final days. And she knew that her mother didn't want to die alone. And so I said to her, I said, and I'm giving you the super short version, but I said to her, well, are you okay now? And she said, yes, she was. But she had to deal with it. She felt that she had let her mother down. She used the term, I wasn't there for her in her last days. And so what I talked to her about was to think about all the days that she had 
had been there for her mother. See, sometimes when someone dies, haven't you had the situation where you may have been visiting the person in the hospital and you go out to the cafeteria to take a break or go to the bathroom and you come back and they've and they've taken and their life has ended well because they didn't want they really didn't want you to be in there on their last breath and God had already decided you're not going to see their last breath I'm going to take that from you so you, you don't have to worry you can't control that so you, you don't have to feel like you weren't there for them so whether or not it was a situation where you in the hospital room and went to to the room or the cafeteria and came back and they were gone or you were in another state and couldn't get there in time because you didn't know that their time was coming that their time was up. you didn't you weren't it wasn't a case of you not, not be there for them it was a case of God deciding that you were not going to see them take their last breath now there was a gift that I had in, in, in my life I saw my mother take her last breath but you know what? Me and my sister had just changed the guard for, for watching her. And a, an hour after my sister had left, and I took over, and then I saw her take my her last breath. And then I had to find a blessing in that right away. And one of the blessings I found was that, that I laughed because I said, no way could my sister have dealt with that, seeing her take her last breath. So God had chosen me as the person in my family. I saw it as a blessing. He chose me as the person in my family see my mother take her last breath and to be in that moment and share with my brothers and sisters to help them get through their grief. And sometimes again we have to find a blessing. I have to be sensitive right now to the fact that my car, you know my car uh, when, the, when the mechanic took it for a test drive after I brought it in, when he came back his test drive was less than a minute. He just went, not, not even around the whole block, just through a parking lot. And as he pulled back up, he said, man, I don't know how you driving on this. And I said, slowly and scarefully. Okay, I had to be sensitive. I felt my car rumbling, you know. Even though we're in a tough time right now, I said, wow, what's the matter? I'm feeling something in my tires. I felt this rumbling when the car turned. And I said, I need to take my car to the hospital. It was sensitive to my car. And the, and the blessing, well, as much as it's costing me an unbudgeted amount, I got my car here without having to have it towed in towing would have been an extra expense see so you have to be sensitive to a lot of stuff and don't feed a guilty conscience like I was saying about that woman you know and I was and then she thanked me and she said wow I can't believe I'm, I apologize that I bent your ear I said God always sends us an angel so I had to be her angel and listen to her talk about that as well as I got she got to be my angel by her confiding in me and sharing that 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 information because you know what you know, we were sitting there as two strangers, and then there was a common bond. At this time, you know, with our quote-unquote social distancing, which is really physical distancing, we're meeting a lot of new people, and sometimes we're meeting ourselves for the first time. So remember, forgive yourself. You know, forgive yourself. That's, you know, the forgiveness is important. We are not going to get this right on the first try. You've had a lot of instances in your life that you didn't get it right on the first, second, or third try. But you have to forgive yourself so that you can know that you have another chance to give it another time. Because we're not super. You don't have to be superwoman. You don't have to be superman. But you can have a disposition about how you feel and how you're handling not just this situation, but many of the situations in your life. Remember, I all say, trust your track record that you've gotten over some stuff. You're much more super and you have more superpowers than you think you have. So remember that all, all that you've done, not the one thing that you couldn't do. That's how we forgive ourselves and recognize that we really are super. Think about the things that you've done. Don't focus on the one that you couldn't do. So that's sensitive, super, and loyal. Oh, the loyal was, again, as you think about all the things, but this woman, for instance, she kept make was telling me about the trip she made to, to Florida back and forth when her mother and father were ill and then then she wanted to beat herself up for the one time that she didn't make the trip and you can't do that okay you can't do that so the next grouping I grouped the word sharing life facilitating future and when I when I use the future what I say about the future is the new normal the new normal is here it's the future is every day we're in the future. Every time we get to the future, we never make it to the 
confusion. Every time we get the depressing. And think about it. Have you written a to-do list? Do you have a bucket list? I call it a live it list. Okay? All of these are shared experiences of the future. We say, I'm going to do this. That's not to do this. I'm going to do this moment. I need to get this done next week. I need to schedule this next month. So that's our to-do list. But it's also our bucket list with those of you who use the term bucket list. Well, I need to do this before I die. I want to visit these people. I want to go here. And I call it a live it list because I say these are things, experiences that I want to live. Not things that I want to do before I die. You know, I don't want to kick the bucket. I want to kick my life around. I want to just enjoy it. And again, I don't mind you saying bucket list. It's just a choice of wording. But we have to up find words. The more positive words you can use in your vocabulary, the further you'll go. Choose to control your vocabulary. Don't let your vocabulary control you. Amen. So let's have a live it less. And each day, right now, here's something you can do. Write down something that you've learned. That's what life is about. L-I-F-E. Lens intended for everyone. Okay, guys, here's the part of my message. Let me go back that quickly. All, remember I said the to-do to do list, the bucket list, or living list are all shared experiences because you share them with someone who's on your list. In sharing, we facilitate understanding and compassion. So that's how we get facilitated in there. But when we share, we facilitate understanding and compassion because people have a better understanding of who we are and what we want to accomplish and how they can help accomplish that. So that's understanding. And then the compassion. Again, it reminds us that we're all going through something so they can see, wow, that's something that you haven't done. You know what? I've heard, I met people that said that they had their first birthday party in their 40s, 50s, 60s. I had birthday parties from when I was five years old. My mother always gave us a birthday party. And my sisters, my siblings, my sisters and brothers have continued that tradition of doing that with their kids. So, you know, that's compassion where you say, wow, that's never happened for you. Okay, here's how I can help it happen, help it happen for you. So life, L-I-F-E, lessons intended for everyone. We're getting a new lesson every single day. So what can you do? Here's one of the things you can do as you go through this period, pandemic, pandemic period. Each day, write down something that you learned about yourself. Each day, write down something that you learned about yourself. And it doesn't have to be a new thing. Something, just something. Because confirmation is comforting. See, so sometimes writing something that you knew about yourself is a confirmation. It could be comforting to you that you know that you are still doing that or you're still making. Here are my last four days, okay? For, to, for Since today, my way here, I was coming to my to my, my camp and I could not remember the name of my the guy who runs this or shot and this guy who last year was so wonderful for me i brought my car in and i had diagnosed this i need that and once he did the check on it, he said no you don't need that you only need this but his integrity and not have me you know i said i need an oil change an tire rotation and tune up and he said no all you need is a tune up and a tire rotation and he didn't not charging me for the oil so, so took a, a, an expense away from me i don't remember if that was the thing by the way so it's not somebody said well he just took away the cheapest thing he took away an expense from me that i had to die know that i that if he had said yes that's what you need i was prepared to pay for that but he said no you need that so his integrity is what brought me back i drive well i was living close to this village when i had my car serves last year i I have a little for that. Come to this guy because I know that he's giving me, uh, uh, he's basing his business on reputation and honesty. And so on my way, I did not think of his name, but, but I didn't stress myself. I always say to someone, if you beat yourself up about what you can't remember, you repress the thought. Relax, allow that you can't remember it, and move on. After relaxing and allowing myself to move on, I remembered that his name was Grady. And then, and, and because he he called me sporty, and now granted he could have had that on my record, but he 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 was so personable, and I and just thought about it, and thought about it, and I, Grady, that's his name. 
So I've got that wonderful personal relationship. So that was one of the things that I learned about myself today, that I just had to relax and remember Grady's name. Yesterday, I learned something. I adjusted my speech for a virtual audience. I'm going to be in a speech contest on Friday, and I'm going to send all of you the link so that you can come in and, and watch on Zoom if possible. But I had to adjust my speech because there'll be no audience. I won't be able to see anybody. It's going to be on Zoom, so I had to adjust my speech for a virtual audience. Well, guess what? Maybe where my my uh, industry is open to right now in the, in the speaking business, I might have. I will do more webinars or having virtual audiences. So it was a good practice for me. Sunday, uh, so that was Sunday. Saturday, I watched a virtual contest similar to the one I'm going to be when as well as I had a six hour virtual training where on my contract with the military we had a six hour training where we talked about where our business is going with our contract and how we could do a better job of serving our service members and families as well as looking at the different um, sessions that we facilitate and then fi finally Friday I had a virtual dinner and coaches with my five partners we call ourselves the 2020 visionaries you may have seen um, the videos in my feed you have the two so far i got uh three coming so please go back and check them out and listen to it we call them pandemic perspectives from the 2020 visionary but what they also did was, as we were having a virtual dinner on zoom i i, I talked about the speech contest and then they get Tips. I had them look at me on Zoom and, 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 and talked about what I'm going to wear and everything. So again, it's just something that I got a chance to learn about myself. See, so all of these things help me continue to be who I am. So sharing life, lessons intended for everyone, facilitating the future. You know, all of those things help me continue to be who I am. And so the third grouping in my message, the final message for today, I group self, laughing, love and fantastic and i'll start out with fantastic because fantastic is means that we have to keep celebrating our growth the things that i learned about myself you know the things that are helping me continue to grow and that's fantastic you know you have to be excited about that and then one of my uh, a good friend of mine tony tony onyango you may see her in the, in the feed is shirley tony started learning how to make candles she went to a candle work making class in the process of doing that, she was inspired by our meeting last week on glue. I think it was glue or glue Friday. She started taking. She used and she makes her candles. She also does essential oils in in, uh, in diffusers, so not just the candles. And she started donating to them to first responders in her neighborhood. Okay, and so isn't that a wonderful blessing that she took one of the, for her fantastic attitude? She took a gift. Her and she found a way to put it into use right now. What are you doing that you could be sharing with it? somebody to thank them for making it through? Again, I always I want to remind people, thank the people when you go to the supermarkets, Dollar Tree, BJ's, the people at the cashiers. Thank them. Don't just say thank you. Say thank you for being here. Let them know. Because see, some of them are taking it for granted. Well, I'm in my job. I got some of them are even scared. They're still scared. I mean, you know, but they have support their family. I talked to one, my checkout person at BJ. She said, I'm scared. I have a three-year-old and I'm worried. I said, well, just know that I'll be praying for you. And that eased her. So let them know why you're thanking them for being one of the essentials because they are new for the response. And then love, L-O-V-E, which goes right to that. Let ourselves value everyone. That's why I saved this grouping for last. Let ourselves value everyone. Y'all, everybody is so important to us right now. And then self, S-E-L-F, self-esteem, love's foundation. You have to feel good about you that you can, so that you can love someone else. So that you do have a package of love that you can give. Because if you don't have, you, if you aren't in love with yourself, if you don't like yourself, you don't have that self-esteem, self then you're not giving someone a, a, a good package of love for them to love. And therefore, your value in loving them is really not that high because if I don't have a love for myself how much can I love you I really don't have that much love for you I'm just, I'm just um, uh, uh, oh my god oh, I can't think of a word you know but I, I, I put it in a post earlier so you have to think about it 
but but you know I'll come back with that at the end. Okay, and then and then in fact I came up with, with a saying. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, laughter is important. Keep laughing. I'm with group AADA, the Association for Applied and Therapeutic Humor. And we, always, we believe in the gift of laughter and, and, and healthy humor. So make sure that you get some laughter in. And one of the things that I'm doing and I'm talking about being sensitive, I decided to broadcast my message. You can't tell, but I'm sitting in the handicapped parking space <laughs> at, at my mechanic. And I sat there and I did that. Because I'm at a handicap, you know, for how I'm going to be broadcasting today. So I'm sensitive to that. But here's a saying that I came up for, for doing this broadcast. It says, having handicaps can also be an option. You can choose something to define or confine you. Or you can let them remind you that there's got to be another way. So, I'm, and so my handicap is in having broadcasts sitting in my uh, office where I usually broadcast from but no I chose to sit in a handicapped parking space and the reason I said many handicaps are also an option because I'm not going to take for granted uh, and just say every handicap is an option and disrespect those who may have a handicap but think about that you can choose to let them define or confine you or you can choose to let them remind you that there's always another way how many people do you know who have what we may consider a handicap and they've taken that and they decide there's another way for me to express my life maybe I can't walk maybe I can't see maybe I can't talk maybe I don't have the use but there's another way that I can express who I am. So they don't let the handicap define them. They let it remind them that there's another way. And they're doing so to remind us of the same. So those are my three categories that I'd split the words up in. And then just in case my good friend, I believe it was Heidi Cortman, had sent the word SWING and she put it in all capital letters. I don't know if she did that on purpose or not, but I said, okay, since you put it in all capital letters, I'm going to have to turn it into an acronym. And I want to use it as an acronym to close out a session today. That's F-W-I-N-G. Share, watch, and be inspired by the next glue. G-L-U-E. God's love under every, undoes everything. Swing this over and share this message, y'all. Share it. Uh, uh, watch it. Continue to watch it. I'm going to be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with glue. And then share it with someone to inspire them and have them watch the next glue and help it bring them back. We're going to start a new um, system this, this Wednesday. I got a good suggestion from my, my little brother, Paulie. He said, why don't you use the, the word of, the, why don't you let the message be by the letter of the alphabet? So on Wednesday, our letter is going to be, we're going to have a message based on the letter A. So any words that begin with the letter A, you can put in the thread and I'm going to get those into the message. I might not do a shout out and express each letter. I'm just going to deliver the message. But the letter will be based on the letter, the word, the message will be based on the letter A. And now I can go through the alphabet. So each bro each glue broad Monday, Wednesday, and Friday will be based on one of the letters of the alphabet. So what that will do is to extend our ooh, be, he's trying to get it B is a, is a letter for Friday. He's trying to on the message soon. Early he could be a boss and that's the W and that's what it's in week twenty four. Okay. But anyway, look, thank you so much for Wednesday or Glue Monday today. Remember G L U E God's love and us everything. But you gotta make sure that you take care of yourself because keeping it together at a time like this is so important. But recognize that your track record says that you've kept it together before. This is now a new area that you have to use in keeping it together. You'll be able to because you've got what it takes. Thanks so much. God loves you and so do I. That's not my line, but it just came to me, so I had to go on and use it. Keep learning about yourself and keep sharing with others. I love you. Ciao. Take care.